Hello and welcome to the latest episode of MEP Engineered Online, where we speak to the top contractors, consultants, suppliers, and stakeholders involved in raising the standards in the MEP and HVAC sectors and shedding a light on sustainability and technology. I'm Anup Oman, the editor of MEP Middle East, and joining me today is Saeed Alaba, who has taken over as the Chief Executive Officer of AESG. To get the show started, thank you, Saeed, for joining us here today, and congratulations on your promotion. Thank you, Anup. Saeed, to get the show started, let's dive straight into it. In an industry that has historically lagged in the adoption of technology, and for a large part, still continues to use PDFs and spreadsheets, paper-based contracts, how important is it to catalyze a data revolution in the built environment? Well, it's, it's, it's vital. I mean, in the, to, to, to give some context in um, the seminal Building a, a Safer Future um, report, which is an independent review of building regulations um, following you know, obviously a number of high profile um, fires that unfortunately happened on, on, on buildings. And um, it found that sort of an insufficient or inaccurate data um, significantly impacts the performance and efficiency and safety of buildings. Um, and we've seen, okay, that, that things have evolved and we've moved a little bit away from paper-based systems. Um, we really do need to move towards, you know, fully digital um, web-based uh, system of managing building data uh, where you can overlay, um, you know, smart tools to make sure that the data is managed effectively. Um, because building data is not something that just happens once and, and is filed away and done. It has to be updated, it has to be accessible, um, and it has to be accurate um, and, and represent um, what's going on in the building. So um, particularly as buildings get more complex, uh, particularly as the world does, does move from sort of rural to, to urban habitats um, and density of buildings increases, it really is very important that we, that we are capturing building data um, and making sure that that data is accurate um, and, and accessible in real time as well. You touched upon two very interesting topics, both in terms of urbanization, more people moving to urban cities, but also this move towards smarter cities, smarter building, connected buildings. Could you briefly touch upon how Data Plus will bridge this gap in the industry, especially in terms of MEP through better collaboration between stakeholders or the integration of BIM and CFM technologies? Yeah, so, so basically the, the, the platform that, that we'll be rolling out on our projects is basically a digital um, platform for the commissioning and handover of, of buildings. Um, you, you, you hit the nail on the head when you say the MEP systems and, and how they get more complex. I mean, that's, you know, the, the MEP systems are the hearts and lungs and, and organs of a building. It's what, you know, keeps things running, keeps things safe, keeps things performing. Um, it really is vital that, that that data is captured accurately. Um, and we've got that data integrated in, in, into all the systems of the building. So um, to, to go more specific into sort of what, what we've developed and what we're rolling out is um, a fully sort of digital platform, uh, which will be web-based, where all of the data, the commissioning and handover data for all of the MEP systems and assets uh, will be captured by our team. It'll be integrated within, within the BIM model. Um, so that it's all all there and overlaid, um, so that the asset data, the asset tags, the the asset performance, you know how it was commissioned, and um, how it was set to perform at, at handover is all captured there, and and then that data doesn't just stop at that point. That then gets you know, overlaid into sort of the facility management tools, whether it's a CAFM system they use or others. Um, the reason we've 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 chosen to to utilise the platform that we have is that it um, can. Um, speak and, and, and interact with all of these various platforms, whether it's BIM, CAPM or others, so that that data doesn't just stop at handover, it then has to be updated and, and, and progressed all the way through. Um, but then, you know, that, that's when things can really get interesting because once you've got that data set and it's integrated with your BIM models and your CAPM systems, is you can then start, you know, integrating some smart techniques, um, like IoT devices, where, you know, you can interlink that into the, into the data that, you know, how is the actual collecting some real-time data on site, linking that into sort of the, the asset data that you have. And on top of that IoT, you can, again, you can sort of overlay some AI platforms um, and the like, which then really translates into sort of smart performance of buildings. So when we're talking about 
you know, smart buildings and smart performance. You know, it all really starts from, you know, what is the data that's in there? How accurate is that data? Is it real time? Is it up to date? Um, and this is where we think there's, there's going to be a lot of potential in the future. Wonderful. And Syed, looking to the future, what potential lies in the incorporation of IoT and AI and digital twins specifically in terms of improving energy efficiency and optimizing building performance? Has the time come for clients and developers to truly consider the full long-term life cycle of a building rather than focus merely on handover deadlines or CapEx budgets? Mm. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's, that's, that's a key that we see is that um, you really need to have that transition from you know, construction into handover and operation to happen seamlessly and ensuring that that data flow from construction into operation happens effectively. I mean, to me, one of the biggest pitfalls we see in sort of energy efficiency in buildings or, or safety performance in buildings is, is things falling apart at that juncture. So what we see with um, the, the approach that we're taking and the tool that we're rolling out, the platform that we're rolling out, is that we're able to ensure that thread, um, almost that golden thread of data, um, you know, on the sort of performance um, and the systems and how they're supposed to perform all the way through in, into the building. And you, you know, you, you could be talking about, you know, tens of thousands of systems, um, making sure that you have that carried through um, then enables the operations team to pick that up and ensure that the efficiency happens um, effectively. Um, so, yeah, so I think, you know, clients are definitely starting to take that more long-term view, that life cycle view. Um, but we see one of the, the pitfalls at the moment where they're unable to, to actually achieve the results they're looking for is they don't have access to accurate data of what's actually gone into the building and, and how that's, that equipment is performing. Right. And following your appointment as the Chief Executive Officer of AESG, one of the biggest news that's come out is the acquisition of Springboard Middle East. How will AESG's outlook and your outlook for 2021-2022 be spurred by the acquisition of Springboard Middle East regional contracts and its staff, its IP and assets um, that was recently announced? Yeah, well, I think look, um, taking a step back, we, we've got huge ambitions um, for 2021. Um, we've signed off our business plans and, and budgets for the year, um, and, and we're effectively funding a, about a 60-70% growth in the business. Um, in through the Middle East, UK, as well as in, in Asia. So, so this, this acquisition does, does sort of complement that, you can say, um, and definitely enhances um, what we're doing in terms of the digital um, engineering and, and, and sort of our, our digital-led approach to, to consultancy as well. Um, so yeah, so I think from, from that perspective, definitely, and I think from particularly what we're doing in sort of our commissioning um, handover and asset management work, um, having, having sort of the, the, the IP and the, the, the team from Springboard involved with us um, definitely enhances what we're doing there. And, and ultimately, we feel that we can offer better value to clients, um, which, which in turn is, is what, what in our industry is what, what generates growth. Um, you know, you're providing better value to clients, you, you will then the retention of clients and, and extend your pipelines and the like. So, so I think definitely it complements what we're, we're looking to achieve. It was great talking to you, Saeed. Looking forward to catching up with you again sometime in the future. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, pleasure speaking to you as always. Pleasure talking to you. Too. For those of you watching, you know the drill. Feel free to share, comment, like, and subscribe for more such videos with the top influencers in the industry. That's all for now. And until next time, goodbye.